In this video, we are going to talk about IC Lite extension for Forge and Automatic 1111. First, let's talk about the possible use cases for this extension. The first use is that it enables precise control over the lighting conditions within the image. It also controls the source of light, the direction of light, enhancing or altering lighting conditions as well. This extension also helps you to replace the background. This extension allows you to restore the details that were in the original image. It also ensures foreground reinforcement which helps you to keep the colors of the original image with the lighting effect. As you can see it is available for Forge but it also supports automatic 1111 if you install this SD Web UI model patcher first. To install this SD Web UI model patcher all you have to do is go to this link I will give separate links for both the extensions below and when you click on this link all you have to do is go to this green button where it is written code and copy this and paste it inside the extension tab install from URL and click on install once it is installed press the apply and restart UI button and then you can go on to install the main extension that is the IC light extension with the same procedure now you have to download the two models that are required for IC light extension to work I will give the link in the description you have to download these two models go to your models folder make a new folder there named IC light and put both of these models there if you are liking this video up to this point please press the like button so moving on let me show you some examples that I have generated using this extension and I, I will also show you the settings I used to generate those images this extension supports stable diffusion 1.5 at the moment so please don't try it with STXL the first thing to keep in mind is to keep your CFG scale very low i will show you the consequences of both high and low cfg scale in my first example this is how the images came out when my cfg was on the higher side and this is how the images came out when my cfg was on the lower side one more thing that i noticed is that when generating background lighting for an image using the ic light extension the foreground and background resolutions must match for example 640 into 640 foreground image means the background must be 640 into 640 or the process will be seven to eight times slower i don't know how accurate it is but this is what i observed while i was using this extension you will find the ic light extension in both ic IMG to IMG and text to IMG tab. However, the options might be slightly different. You will find two types of model here. When you select the FPC model, prompt doesn't matter in this case. In IMG to IMG tab, you will have more control of the lighting from which direction it is coming. All you have to do is select the image and you have to select from which angle the light will enter. I prefer the ambient the most but you can select. Let's select for this example right light and we'll copy the prompt and paste it here. Remember to keep the resolution same as the foreground image and CFG scale a bit lower. And as per the developers of this app, we need to keep the denoising strength at high value. Let's keep it at 0.95 for now. As you can see from this image, the light is coming from the left, but it is black and white. For this, we have to use, use the original input. 
I'm sorry we have to use reinforce foreground so we enforce the base color let's look at it again as you can see it perfectly preserved the foreground color and even the face details if you look at IC light under the text to ing tab it is the same option minus the lighting control option that we have in img to img tabs so let's recap of what we have learned from this video the first thing we have learned is to keep our cfg cfg scale at lower value the second thing that we have learned is that to keep our background resolution same as the foreground resolution or it will keep the speeds slow on a low vram pcs the third thing is to keep the denoising strength very strong somewhere between 0.9 to 1 is optimum if you have learned anything of value from this video please like this video and subscribe to the channel Thank you for watching.